Right, hello, it's Mark from Snooker Crazy. Uh, I've been asked to show how to put a snooker tip on. Now, that could be fairly complicated, or it could be easy, but um, the reason I say the two differences is because we, if we want to shape it, uh, that, that then becomes a difficult part because people like different shapes. And there are many, many different shapes. You can have a look on the website for them if you like, and you'll see all the different shapes that the uh, professional snooker players have got. So, for this video only, all we're going to do is have a look at taking a tip off, giving it a little clean and then popping a the tip on and that's it. Other videos will show how to do different shapes. So we'll start with this. What I'll first do is just to show you some of the tools. So if we go over to the bench I'll show you some of the tools that different people use. We're going to keep it very basic. I'm sure there's more out there but as I said it's going to be a pretty basic video just to get people going that don't know how to do a tip. So let's go to the bench. Right so what are some of the tools that I use? Uh, I've tried a various ones over the years. I've obviously come to my own method like most people have. You'll see different types of sandpaper there, ranging anything from 80 grit, which most people won't touch, I would say, on a tip because they feel it rips it apart. I like my tips to be fairly low, so that takes the bulk of it off, and then I move down through the papers. Uh, it goes up to about 3,000 grit, which is just to tidy it up a little bit. Um, I use that, and also use the 10,000 grit steel wool, mainly to clean the ferrule, and Although some people burnish the sides of a tip, I just just basically use the steel wool. I find that better. If you get um, little bits of muck on the side, I tend to take it down with strips, and we can see how to do that. Lots of people use many different devices. Here's a sort of a semicircular file, which you can shape with, or this little gadget, which I use for some shapes. You can see that's concave, and it's got the replaceable papers in there. Uh, they, they come as a kit, so there you go, there's a, there's a new kit there, and you can find them on the website if you want to use those, so they're quite good. A um, couple of different files I used to use right at the beginning, a small one just for the intricate work, and the larger one obviously takes the bulk of it off. much prefer sandpaper because I, I feel you personally get a better, a better feel with that, uh, but I say it's not for everyone. Masking tape. Make sure you protect your ferrule and your shaft with masking tape. Uh, if, you're, if you're using sandpaper down there, it can quite easily damage the ferrule. And if you're, as you're going downwards in a certain type of shape on the tip, you can quite easily take a little piece of wood off. And if, if you do that, then you're in all sorts of hurt. Glues. as a Tweetens 10-minute cement, which you'd put on both, both parts. You put on the tip and the ferrule. Wait till it goes a little bit tacky, then you push the two together. That's quite famous. Uh, two of the ones that most people use, I would say, are the gel, the super glue gel. The reason you use a gel is you can put a little dab in the middle of the ferrule and you can actually move your tip around and it gives you a little bit more time. So the, I say the, the, probably the number one reason you use super glue gel is for the fact that it gives you that little bit more time if you don't quite get it right. I prefer to see everything with a bit of glue on it. So I use the runnier type of super glue gel, it doesn't give you much time. You've got to be on your toes with it, and you'll, you'll get people say, well, that soaks right up into the tip and makes the tip go hard. Well, you've probably put too much on if that's the case. I put a little dab on the tip, and I put it on the, the wood, and then I move it around. It looks like I'm putting more on, but I actually move it around with the tip to make sure that the glue is all over both. You can see it easy enough on the ferrule. A bit more difficult um, on the wood, but, but you know, just give it a couple of goes to get used to it. Always have yourself a pin to make sure that when you're using this after a while, because the, the tops glue up and then you can uh, make yourself a little hole. When you're fitting tips, make sure you go up a size. If you've got a nine point something tip, make sure you fit a 10. If you've got a tip that's exactly on the size, so if you've got a 10 mil tip, uh, a 10 mil ferrule, don't fit a 10 mil tip, fit an 11 and take it down. If you don't get it exactly right, there's a fair chance that the ferrule, if there's got some damage to it, could quite easily damage the cloth. Uh, you don't want to be doing that and there's no reason why do that. So always go up a size and then you can cut it as you go down. I've got a bar mat and there's a piece of old floor tile by the looks so I think I've grabbed that from. I tend to do mine slightly different. Uh, if you're chopping down onto the, the tip when you turn the cue upside down, most people chop downwards along the side of the ferrule to get the majority of the tip off. Um, I do it slightly different, I do it with a spiral which I'll probably show a little bit later in the video. But
but what I use these for is instead of using this little device which is a tip clamp I tend to push down, turn the, turn the key upside down and push it down on the floor. So once I've got it a little bit tacky I'll push down for around about a minute. Uh, it's just a method I prefer, I don't push down too hard but I just want to make sure that it's gone off. Now what I would say if you do use one of these and most of them are wood and all plastic um, get yourself a little bit of leather cut it off and put it on this side because when you actually take it down the queue and put it on the top and this piece goes up and down that's actually doing it on the surface of your queue this side's not too bad because it fits up nice and snug but this bit here that goes up and down the ring is the bit that tightens against your queue if it's going to tighten make sure it's on a nice little bit of uh, leather so it's got a little bit of play in it I've seen people use these before and as they pull them down they don't really think about it too much they like to make sure the tips okay so they pull it down tight and as they get it down tight it puts a nice little score in there and of course when you go to use your cue next time you can feel it and it will just drive you mad um, as regards cutting the tips um, it's up to you Stanley knife is probably the most popular I tend to like a ferro um, tend to like a scalpel uh, the reason being is that a little bit sharper, a little bit more intricate and if you're making certain types of shapes then yeah it takes it off a bit easier. Now if you want to buy one like this, this is a number three, I think you just about see that so, and the number three is referring to the, the holder if you like and the scalpel blades are as you can see just about impregnated in there is a 10A. The reason that I'll tell you that is because it's a pain to try and match one to the other. That's about all I use generally. Um, there's a fair few things on there. Some people actually fit a tip on the queue, stick it in their lathe and do it on a lathe which you know obviously takes some seconds really. Uh, if you've got a lathe, fantastic, then, then do that. If not, then use it the old way. I'm going to try and fit this tip the most basic method I can to show that you don't need all the tools. I'm probably going to use a bit of 80 grit sandpaper followed up by a bit of 1000 or 3000 grit just to take the edges off and a bit of steel wool I'm going to use the worst glue which is the one that they say is the one that's a pain you don't get long enough to go off which is the Loctite the runny type not the gel and I'm going to not use a clamp which makes it easy I'm going to spin it upside down pop it on the floor for a minute and wait and then I'm just basically going to shave a few bits off of the tip so you can see how easy it is uh, and I'll be doing it backwards with my feet in between the tripod I've got bifocals on so I can't see too close and I'll be doing a lot of guessing so if I can do it like that out of my normal light because it's quite poor light in here um, I'm sure you'll be able to do it so I'll pop the uh, camera back onto the tripod and we'll make a start right so first off we're going to cut the tip off um, what I would say is you really want to protect your ferrule and your shaft every time you do this so Use a non-tacky type because sometimes if you get the really tacky sort of masking tape it can be a pain to get it off and as the more you try and get it off the more you grind it into your shaft. I stick the first piece around about a millimetre down on the ferrule so I can see what the glue is doing and then just wrap it around. Use a large masking tape or the, the smaller one makes no difference really. Again I get a bit Angle about these things because as soon as your shaft is damaged, although that's fairly easy for me to, to fix that, you don't really want to be doing that. If you're using a tip clamp, see how far that comes down. So you want to put even more masking tape on. So I'm not going to use one, we're not going to make it easy. Spin it round, make sure there's a, a good bit on there, especially if you're using a clamp. Now, for me, so I can't really see this too well, but we're going to do a bit of a guess here. The light's poor. I think I can see you there. I will try and just do a little score just above the ferrule. And then when you do, turn the cue around so you can cut it towards you. Put the scalpel in there or the sandy band. Just slowly move it towards yourself. There's no rush until you take it off. Place it carefully aside, like that. 
And then what you're going to do is do a spiral cutting slowly into the blade, cutting towards you. If you start to hit big bits of wood, come up a bit. You don't want to take a lot off, so it's a careful process. As soon as you damage your ferrule, you're going to be in all sorts of problems. Obviously you can't see my face in this, but rather you, rather you saw the ferrule itself and the tip, and no doubt uh, you would as well. <laughs> right, now gently, without damaging anything, you're just trying to pick the glue up. You can just about see that. Just pick the glue up. That's all you're aiming to do. You don't want to take any wood off. You don't want to take any ferrule off. It starts crunching against the ferrule. You're not doing it right. So very difficult to do this. I'll do this the opposite way around. So you can pretty much see a little bit, I think. Yeah, and as you start to do it, very difficult to see. But you can see you've got to get your method right personally. About three quarters away up the blade. Just spin. Just a little bit at a time. Until the glue's gone. Try not to dig any holes in there. As I said, try not to do anything but just take the glue off. Now hopefully you've had a tip that's been fitted okay in the past and you won't have too many problems. Obviously some of them you're going to take off and you're going to think, oh my god, what is that? I had a tip earlier today and I don't even know what the glue is. It was just so hard, the glue, and you're just chipping away at it. There you go. Slowly, when you get to the bottom of it and you think you're there, You'll probably get close to the ferrule and you don't want to do it too much. Right. Now what you can do is to check by putting the other end of the blade or a ruler down, put up some light, I'll put it up to my window and you can start to see if it's square and if there's a gap in it. And I like to run my finger over it as well. If you start to fill just the few bits that are sticking up. Now I would just say really gently, and I'm on about gently, because if you do it really lightly, you can feel if there's any glue there. So I'll do it really gently, and just, it's like you want to take a thousandth off. And you can see just slight bits of almost dust coming off. Don't go mad. So don't be taking all your brass off. You don't need to. I've seen people put sandpaper on the top. <sighs> Difficult one that. Can't say it's wrong, but I always think if you're putting too much on the top, or take too much sandpaper if you like, you're going to take bits off. I've seen people put a file on the top. Yeah, don't do that. That's definitely not the right way. I don't really think I'd probably do either personally. I'd rather do this really lightly until you're confident. You can feel whether it's running over any bumps or not. And that feels pretty good. And what you've hopefully done is just about shined it at the most. See that? If I can see it, you can see there's a probably whoever's done this in the past is a minor, minor, minor score in the seat in there. But <clears throat> I don't think that's going to cause us any problems. I'm not putting any effort onto that at all. Just running it over. Yeah, that seems pretty good to me. Right. Now what I do is I take you back over to the bench because I'd like you to see what I do with the tip. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to try and take the surface off of our oak master. You look at the base just about see that I think yeah you've obviously got a little bit of a shiny surface on there we want to take that off because we want the glue to stick up just a little bit into the tip to help bond it and the best way to do that is to get some sandpaper again I use 80 grit I don't dig into it as such because obviously I'll take a quite a lot off not that it would make too much difference if I kept it square but 
we don't want to make the, the hairs come out too much if we can, so I tend to skim it. This is just me. You know, if you want, you can use 600 grit. It's up to you, as long as you just get down to take that sheen off. Um, I get with two fingers. And I try and draw a figure of eight. And it's quite a big one. If you look at how much of the sandpaper I'm using, I'm just skimming that. I'm not putting any effort into that at all. When you get into it a little bit, if you're doing the figure of eight, it will keep the, the tip even and take a small amount off. Yeah, so that's, that's what it's going to look like. Still doing the figure of eight, keeping it even. And all I want to do is just get rid of that shine. Once the shine's gone, you're ready, really then to think about sticking it onto the, the barrel. Yeah, it looks pretty good. There you go. If you can see that. So it's not blue anymore. Pretty much gone. Gone a lot, lot of a lighter shade. There you go. There's a quarter piece of sandpaper. Figure of eight. That, as I said. And you're ready to go. Now, little tip passed on to me, whether you do it or not, it's up to you. I've fitted, say, hundreds of tips before I even did this, but it's not a bad thing, so why not do it? Get your knife, just run it a little bit, and very gently put a two or three little scores, and then apparently that helps it, helps the glue bond. Uh, whether it does or not, I don't know, but certainly one to think about. Right, we're now look at sticking that tip on then. Right, as I said, I'm not going to use the gel because the gel will give me too much time and I want to make this as hard as possible. Um, if I can do it under those circumstances, then I'm sure you'll be you'll be okay with the gel. Again, stick a, stick a pin in the top, make sure it's clear before you start. You can let a little bit go on some tissue. Get your tip. This is where you're going to run out of hand, especially if you've got a camera. Now, make sure the air's out of there. Put it down. Now I'm going to put a dab and I'm going to move it with the top. And I'm going to try and take too much time over this just to prove that you can do it with the non-gel stuff. Put a dab on. Probably just about see that. Clock's ticking already. I'm just going to move that around. So it just touches the edges. I'm not putting any more on. If you feel you need a little bit more then fine. But just put a little bit until you're all the way around. There you go. Hold it my other one, I'm going to put a little bit on there, I'm not going to go mad again because I've already got some on there. Just a dab, I'm going to move it right to the edges of the ferrule. I'm sure everyone will say when you push it together it will come out the edges. Right. Let's drop it on there. Now I put both of my fingers there, trying not to glue it. I'm hoping that's going to go as bad as it can, I'm just touching it. And all I'm trying to do is get it in the centre. I'm, so I'm trying to make this as awkward as I can for me. Once it's in the centre, and I'm happy with it, I give it a little tap. Okay. That's it. Now I think that's in the centre now. Now what most people do now is they'll get the clamp, they'll put it down on top, and I'll take my time here, just to prove that I've got a little bit more time than what people think. So, make sure your leather's on, pop it on there, move it to the top, slide it in without moving that tip. So that's on there, put it down slightly, and I'm talking about slightly, and you just move this down until you're happy that you're tight enough. And then you walk away for as long as you want. This sort of glue take about a minute. Um, the gel, can't be too much off of that. If you can leave it overnight, fantastic. But I'm trying to show you a tip that basically you can put on and use within a couple of minutes. So when it happens in a match, you can have a go at that. Now clearly I've, I've been talking a little bit. What I generally do is get a bar mat, turn it upside down with my two fingers, rest it on there gently to make sure tip isn't moving so it's still central put my thumb on the top 
put a very small amount of pressure on. Don't ever push it to the degree where the shaft is bending because that's too much. Don't need to. And then you can count up to 60. Um, up to you how you do it. <laughs> Run a clock, doesn't really matter. I tend to find at the end of it I can just feel a bit of tension in my arms, but just put your body weight just lean. I say so really don't push too hard, you don't want to move that tip. And all you're going to do is just let it bond. Now, the gel is great for if you get it in the wrong position. That just because of the camera, I just touched my finger a couple of times the glue and moved it around. So you could say I've had a little bit of a problem with it, but I've still got plenty of time. Now what you really don't want to do is to get any of that glue on your fingers and then you go around grabbing each end of the shaft and you're away. Um, so I'm always checking my fingers, you'll, you'll see me doing this and what have you, but unless there's nothing on there or anything on there then it's not a problem. So you do that for a minute or so, I'll do it for a minute, and then you're ready. And then basically let go, pick it up, always check it again just in case you've moved it. There you go, that's fine. And then what I do to prepare then is I just take a little bit of the masking take off, tape off to the bottom of the ferrule. That's why you don't want the really tacky stuff because it becomes a pain. There we go. Because what I'm going to do is run, run the scalpel up the side and use that as level. I'm going to use it a bit like a pencil sharpener. There's a big old tip on that which is way bigger than I, I like anyway. I'm sure a lot of people do. If you ever get any excess on, on there, obviously take this off before you put it down. And I'm rubbing my hand all the way around there and there's absolutely nothing on there. Which is what you'd expect because this glue should have gone off by now. So, let's get a scalpel. Now, I'm going to treat this a bit like a pencil sharpener. So, I like to put it about three quarters of the way up. And I've had a nice shiny ferrule to so show I'm not going to damage it. And then what I'm going to do is so now I'm stood in between the tripod, is slowly just take a bit off and spin the cue as I go. You can probably see that hopefully. You can see it more than I can, that's for sure. And you just keep spinning. Now as I say, you, you don't have to do it this way. There's some nice videos out there showing you chopping it down. I prefer it this way because you're taking a piece at a time. If you find your scalpel's not enough, then put another blade and I'll put a new blade on every tip because they're really cheap. You can start to see it go away. Yeah. But so it doesn't matter either method, it's just preference. I'm just trying to show you something different. This blade is particularly blunt. So I'll probably change that in a second. There you go. And I just prefer to take my time just going further up. It's slowly getting there. Just making sure you can see that again. you've got it straight up to say the top third then at that point there you've got to decide what sort of shape you're going to have. I personally don't like them too tall so my tips don't last too long and you've got to be wary that the tips although they're in the box and you, they look the great shape as soon as you take the surface off even with this one if I just spin it you can see They, they're not always as, as straight as you think they are. Some of them are quite misshapen. And that's all makes of tips. So I wouldn't particularly worry too much. I think their tips are for shaping. I'm going to put another blade on that. Should take me two seconds. Try not to cut yourself if you're wiping your face, try not to stick the scalpel in your eye. Um, if you can see that, very easy to put on. 
There you go, that's it. Right. Again, so I'm doing this backwards, trying not to knock the camera, so appreciate the fact if I can do it like that, you'll be fine. There you go. Cut a nice bit off there. So if you're spinning it, it's just about as even as you're going to be, really. And then what you're doing is you're trying to keep it level with the ferrule and finding any bits that are sticking out. And as you keep going around, and you'll pick those little deviancies up until it's gone. And if you look at the side, it's not, not bad at all. I think you can see that there. Forget the top and the unevenness there. That's just the way that's manufactured. We'll get rid of that in a minute. But that's not bad for now. I'd, I'd like to see that a bit better, but for the sake of the video, you, you get the idea, really. There you go. Right. This is the fun bit. You get the different types of sandpaper. Now, some people will use, as I said, These ones, I like them. I do actually like them. Your 80 grit going down, you might go down to 600 and eventually get your way down to um, 1,000, maybe even 3,000 if you want to take the hairs right off. Still wool, that's 1,000 grit. I tend to cut a few strips off. We can sort of have a look how we do that in a minute to do the edges and another type of tip shaper. Personally, if you're going to use this one, some people start by taking it down that way. Again, take your ferrule, so put some on there again in a minute. Some are like this. Some actually put it on the top and just spin. So you just want that shape. Once they get that shape, they then just clean it up. That, to me, is way too big. I'm only going to do a standard shape, and I don't like the way that you get so much flex in the tip. If you put your fingernail in there, you can see it moving up and down. It's not, it's not really what I like, but we're all different, you know. If you look on the website, you see many different tips. If the pros can't make their mind up as to what the best tip is, then what chance have we got? So, let's put some masking tape on there. Again, as I said, put it up to about a millimetre from the top. Another little tip for you, if your ferrule is particularly dirty, um, what I would think about doing is, when the tip's off, make sure you've got some masking tape at the bottom of the ferrule, get some 10,000 grit steel wool, just turn it, spin the cue until it's all gone nice and shiny. A little bit easier to do when it's back on. Let's pop this back up a little bit. Go. Okay. So, yeah, right. no angle mine, about there, and I'm quite aggressive with it, um, you might want to take time, sometimes I even grind it a little bit at the top, because I know that if I'm going to take a third off, even if I really roughly do the top, uh, by the time I get down to where I want to be, I've already gone down a couple of sandpapers, and I'll, sometimes I'll just skim, so as much as it might say 80 grit. You're only skimming the surface, so it's, it's, it's definitely a fill thing. If you need to, go down through the sandpapers, but fit a few tips and find out. I get so many people say that they, they couldn't fit a tip, they tried it once, they don't want to do it anymore. A guy came down from London the other day just to fit a tip, and it was a bit of a shame. He said a couple of them would come off, and it was just the, the preparation and the glue. So have a go, just have a go. If, if you really don't want to do it on your queue, go to B&Q or Wix and buy yourself a, a 9mm dowel and just stick it on that and try it on that, and that way you're not going to damage too much then. Right, now this one's quite a hard tip by the looks of it. It's not wanting to move too much. So, as I'm doing this, I'm actually going in slow motion, I'm going down that way, slowly turning the cue around, trying to keep it uniform, so whatever I'm taking off, I'm taking off the same all the way around. Now you'll find that quite a few of the tips, although you're doing it this way, they're, they're not that uniform, so they actually come and they're misshapen. Sometimes if you look up the sides you think, well there's, there's about 6mm one side, and there's about 8mm the other. You think, well, that can't be right. But it's just not compressed quite right, so you might have to go through the box of tips and decide which ones you're going to keep, which ones you're not. 
because you're never really quite sure whether that's compressed all the way through. So although you might end up then with a lovely tip shape, you end up with something that hasn't got a uniform compression all the way through it. So yeah, let's do this a little bit more. So I don't like using files and that, not anymore. So I find I get far more fill with these sort of things. Sandpaper, especially if you're not getting it that way, you can grind it in a little bit more. And this is sound a lot more overcomplicated than it is. I'm actually trying to do it in a circular motion, but also at that 45 degrees because I, I find it takes a bit off, a bit more off. Uh, you generally just keep doing it until you're happy. So you haven't got to worry loads on the sides. If you find you do it the method where you chop downwards, um, you can actually get into all the little bits. You find that you have like a lump off and another lump. And it's not a hexagon, but you've got those little sharp bits. And again, you can go and take those off the side. And you're, you're sort of cutting away. So you've got your cue, low ceiling there, your cue inverted, and you're cutting down through it. Um, it's okay to do it like that. I just find that a lot easier. As you say, spinning it around takes a, takes a little while, but you know, it's fine. I'm selling with takes. This is a particularly hard tip for some reason. So in a pack of 50 you get lots of different types, you've got to decide whether you think that's the one for you. If you really don't, sometimes you can feel it in a tip as you're putting on, take it off, throw it away, because otherwise you can be back down the club, messing around, you're going to convince yourself, is it right, is it wrong, take it off, just take it off, bin it, put another one. You know, chances are you're, you're generally not doing this in the club, you're probably doing it at home, so no rush really. So it's getting a bit of speed up, it's not taking loads off, I mean it's, I've had so many people say don't use this sandpaper, I think well, why not, you can't see too much of your tip flying up in the air, again, I'm struggling to see it in this light, but not too bad. So you can, if you like, go down through the sizes. That's a 600. If you do it the other way, where you've got the you're chopping down on it, on the tip, and you're taking pieces off, and you can't quite get it as rounded as you as you like, round. Cut yourself a strip of sandpaper off. Probably go for 600 upwards. I wouldn't go. To, don't go anywhere near 80 for that because you're going to touch your ferrule. Put it on the tip. Yes, yeah, so it's like that. And then basically, once you're confident you got it on that bit, just pull it. Another bit. Just pull it. Twisting as you go. Pull it. Looking at each bit. Pull it. Till you're happy with it. What's this one? It's 3,000 grit. I'll probably use 1,000 if I wanted. And if you're just trying to get those few hairs off, again, just take it off like that. Yeah, feels lovely actually. Take it off like that. Spin. Yeah, feels pretty good. I'd say this one's definitely a hard tip. Personally, you can burnish the sides many different ways. Um, people want all different types of finish on the sides to try and maintain the size of the tip when they want. Some people will put a 20 pound note and they're pulling it round, just burnishing those sides, get it up, get it in there. Um, other people, like myself, I'm not too worried about it if I'm honest. I lightly put my tip in it and just go over the whole tip. I'm honest, get it light, and I like to do that with. And this is so, make sure you get the right one 10,000 grit steel wool. So that's four zeros. Make sure you get the right one. This is how I like it. So, not for everyone, find your own way. Another way of doing it is to get uh, nail varnish. I've seen that done. 
and lightly go around the edges so it goes really hard on the sides um, but you've got to be careful with that because as soon as it starts to soak in uh, and it gets really hard if you get it in the wrong place it's going to destroy your game so personally I like that now as I say I'd probably do that slightly different if I could see a little bit better but let's see if I can get that reason be there that's the centre spinning it not too bad now as you start the task of cleaning your ferrule. As I said, you can get something like a 3000. Uh, see if we can pick a bit. There you go. Like that. Pull it. As you're pulling it, it will clean. Try not to change the shape of your tip. This is just for the ferrule. Yeah, you can slowly see it starting to go in. Personally, I'd probably burnish the tip and this at the same time. Just taking your time, putting it into the ferrule. Probably wouldn't have too much to take off if I do it normally. But as I say, I'm doing a lot of this. Walking in between there, yeah, I'm virtually there. Now people get very anal about the ferrules and the tips because at the end of the day you're going to be staring at it and all the snooker that you're playing so why not take a little bit of time and make sure you get this right. As much as it looks like I'm doing the whole lot, I've actually got my nail on the, the ferrule in between the steel wall and that and I'm just actually pushing a little bit in at a time. So the rest of it's moving around but it's not actually doing anything and what I'm actually doing is taking off any little bits of glue. Try if you can and avoid the temptation to get it off with a knife because um, as soon as you take a chip out of it guess what you're into a new game you're doing something else. So as a, as a cursory go on a tip not going too much you can see you get that close you see you're starting to get in there now I think it's probably just a little bit of glue around the top but you get the general idea so as a quick go on a tip how do you stick one on that'll get you going um, in other videos what we'll do is we will just do a few different shapes now what I could do is just to quickly show you what a pain this can be to get off just so when you're taking it off you realise that you can get a little bit of tack. This is low tack masking tape but I don't mean to say that it won't still be a pain just take your time again like most things with repairing cues and maintaining them um, it's all about a little bit at a time. Just a couple of tiny bits. Just really gently. I'd wipe it to start with, but Although it looks like I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on that, I'm not actually putting any and I'm just spinning it. Just gently taking it up. And if for any reason you're not entirely happy with that, or you take a little bit of the oil off, just pop a slight, a very tiny dab of oil on there, and just take it up and down. But we can do that in another video. But there you go, hopefully you got the general idea. 
and we'll see you on the uh, the videos where we shape the tips. See you again.